there seems to have been some strange upsurge in the number of right-wing sites le lately, which seem to imagine that no black people were involved in black in European history every time the subject of black history month comes along. Obviously, black people did not make up a majority of any culture in in Europe and in the past. However, what we find are these wonderful sites that have sprung up by sort of um, often embittered little right-wing individuals who wish to seem to make themselves into tin pot little copies of Oswald Mosley or something similar, where they start going on about like um, black people having no presence at all in his black European history. This is equally stupid. I've selected, uh, inspired by my wife, someone outside even British history. Here's Alexander Pushkin. And Alexander Pushkin is one of those writers who's stereotypically Russian. If you start doing a list of Russian writers, you're going to get Tolstoy, you're going to get Pushkin, you're going to get a few others if you start getting a pen out. However, what's less well known is his great-grandfather was black. And I'm going to read out some of this. Alexander Pushkin is known as a quintessential Russian writer. What many readers don't know is that he took particular inspiration from his African great-grandfather, General Abraham Petrovich Ganibal. Before I go on, I'm going to point out I am not a native Russian speaker, and although I speak some Russian, my pronunciation is rough on some of it. So anyone who's a native Russian speaker who hears this, is feel free to correct bits of my pronunciation. I'm sure my wife will later. According to Anne Lounsbury, a scholar of Russian literature, Boyar credentials, African heritage, and a personal link to Peter the Great were all crucial to Pushkin's identity, playing up his connection with Gannibal. The author adopted the name Africanets, the African. His connection with his relative showed up in other ways too. Gannibal, sometimes written on Hannibal, because of the confusion with the letter G and H when you start doing translation between Cyrillic and Latin, but that's another matter, was very young when he was kidnapped from Africa and sent to Constantinople as a slave. From there, a Serbian count, of some t uh, this is a big debate, I should point out, this Serbian count is sometimes named as a Russian, named Sava Vladislavic, brought him to the court of Peter the Great in St. Petersburg. The Tsar became very fond of the young boy. He made him his godson, conferring upon him the patronymic Petrovich son of Peter and sent him to study in France. By the time Peter the Great's daughter Elizabeth took the throne, Gannibal's rank and accomplishments allowed him noble status. But in a 1742 letter to the Russian from the Senate, Gannibal insisted that he's, and watch this next bit, have a quick listen, insisted that his noble status was linked to his father being an African chief. I am African origin of an illustri illustrious local nobility. I was born in the city of Lagone, on lands belonging to my father, who reigned the furthermore over two other cities. This appeal is the only recorded testimony of his African origins. The search for Lagon began in the 19th century, culminating in history um, <laughs> historian Dr. Duerjon uh, um, Namako's late 20th century discovery. The African Institute, the Russian Academy of Sciences, and the Pushkin Museums in Moscow, St. Petersburg, and Mikolai Asovskoy support his founding that Gannibal was probably born in Lagon, Bernie, in Cameroon. That's something that's been debated back and forth, by the way, I'll add for the sake of integrity. Some people say he may have been born in Ethiopia as well. For Pushkin, the African ancestor who left tresses himself in his physique was also present in his persona. Pushkin's work criticised society, which led to temporary banishment and exile. Gannibal represented what it was like to be uprooted, yet live in the heart of one's adaptive homeland. He was simultaneously an insider and an outsider, rather like a poet who looks in on the world to compose about it. This influence provides a subtext for many of Pushkin's writing, including the Moor of Peter the Great, his unfinished historical novel of Gannibal's life. Pushkin's most famous work, Eugene Onegin, alludes to Russia's turbulent history, straddling east and west. The story has been reinterpreted as an opera, ballet, and film. It also contains one of his own most famous references to his own mixture of Russian and African heritages. 
It's time to drop astern the shape of the dull, dull shores of my disfavour, and there beneath your nun- noonday sky, my Africa, where waves break fire to mourn for Russia's gloomy saviour, land where I learn to wi- he live and weep, land where my heart is buried deep. I haven't quite finished with this either, because we'll be coming back to Cannibal's son in a minute. Here's Abraham's son, Ivan Abramovich Cannibal. Ivan Abramovich Cannibal became a renowned military officer and a renowned naval officer. He enrolled at nine years old. That's actually not that uncommon. You'll find that British naval officers were enrolling at ridiculously young ages as well by modern standards. He was famous for being part of a major action against the Ottomans, as this link shows, and I'll be putting this link in my presentation. He eventually retired, and as it, you'll find quite funnily, in the, especially in light of present history, he has a role in the founding city of the city of Kherson in Ukraine, and he was appointed as a commander of the Kherson fortress. So you'll find that two men who are black heritage had major roles in Russian history. So for these wonderful people who go on about no black people have contributed anything to European history and who keep doing this, please stop it. Yes, his father came to Russia as a slave. Ivan certainly wasn't regarded as one and was highly respected as a military officer. If I wanted to, I could also, just for a laugh, find you the uh, large number of Irish people who were part of the Russian military diaspora and who are ma- uh, contributed majorly to the, uh, to um, military victories in Russia's history. You might find some surprising names in there and surprising historical links. I'm getting rather tired of these rather silly sites founded by people who seem to think that you know, black people just lived for fried chicken for one million years and never invented anything and think that they are the height of humour when they type they was kings and stuff like that. Please, go and buy some books and open your brains and learn something. <laughs>